Hi, welcome back to a new video. In today's video, we're going to talk about historical China and modern China. Yeah, we're going to talk about old versus new and yes. which one we like more. So, which one do you like more? <laughs> <laughs> Let's first talk about kind of the old China, right? Kind of the traditional yes. historic China. We just moved into a new apartment. Mm -hmm. New apartment to us, but it is in a very old area of Beijing. Uh, we are living in the Hutongs, which are very historical, very old. They have been around for hundreds of years. Like we go out of our little Hutong now and we can immediately see Zhengsheng Park, which used to be part of the Forbidden City. Mm -hmm. And if we walk a little bit, we are at the Forbidden City. Yes. It's like a two minute walk. Yeah, so we're very close to the historical center. Yeah, so like when we think about old China, we often think of like old pagodas or we think about like the historic buildings like the Temple of Heaven or the Forbidden City. Yeah, or you know. even um, the terracotta warriors in Xi'an. Mm, right. Those are very old. Um, we have Pingyao, a very old city where one of the first banks was founded years ago. Yeah, and you even did a trip where you went along the ancient Silk, Silk Road, Road, right? Yes. So you went to many different places and one of the places that you went to is actually part of the sponsor of today's yes. video. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, during that trip we started in Xi'an, which used to be the capital during the Tang Dynasty and back then it wasn't called Xi'an, it was called Chang'an, uh, yeah, which was the old name for Xi'an and Xi'an, as you might know, was a start or end point, depending on how you look at it, <laughs> uh, from the Silk Route. Yeah, and so the sponsor of today's video, the company is called Inxian. It's mm -hmm. a media company. And we'll tell you more about that later, but they have done something pretty unique where they blended both the old and the new. So we'll tell you about that in a little bit, but let's hear more about your trip and kind of what you did on this Silk Road trip. trip yeah, <laughs> yeah, we kind of like went back in time. So we traveled from Xi'an uh, all the way to Urumqi in Xinjiang uh, and stopped by some historical places that were very important on that Silk Road. So I visited the Mogang grottoes. Maybe you've heard of them. They are very old and beautiful grottoes that were carved by people. I think they're similar to the ones in Datong and in Luoyang. You have those type of grottoes as well. Yeah, so there's a lot of like really kind of ancient uh, artifacts, I guess you could say, especially if you go to the museums, you can see all these ancient artifacts of, well, ancient times, yeah. right? And I think that's really interesting because like China has one of the longest kind of continuous histories of any like area or, I mean, you wouldn't say nation because it's no. been multiple kingdoms mm -hmm. and multiple Societies, nations, but yeah, maybe. society, I guess you could say that they've shared this long history and you can still see that in many places today, mm -hmm. like even in our neighborhood, like we're talking about. What are some of your favorite kind of historical places or buildings mm -hmm. or artifacts that you can think of? To begin with the Great Wall. I mean, that <laughs> is very impressive thinking about how people built that wall with their hands. Um, and for so long, like so many kilometers on end stretching out. So that is very impressive. And it's amazing kind of how it's now kind of old and new, the Great Wall. I mean, mm. we've both been there a couple of times. Like, a lot of the parts have been restored and they look kind of like very modern and new and not anywhere close to what some other part looks like, looked like that are very remote and have not been restored. Mm -hmm. So there you can also see how they're trying to preserve the old but making it look like almost too new. Yeah, well, I mean, I've seen pictures of the Forbidden City where it was like overrun and there was like bushes and stuff growing because there was a time period and I'd have to look up the exact date, but there was a time period when basically it fell into ruins because the people, like the government wasn't taking care of it. And uh, luckily things have changed and now things are being preserved quite, quite a lot of things are being preserved mm -hmm. now. So when we look at like specifically Xi'an, like the Karakawa Warriors, like that's pretty impressive. I think yes. the first time I went, they only had uncovered a little bit. And then when mm -hmm. you went back, you oh, took more pictures and I was like, whoa, I didn't see like half of this because yeah, they're still they slowly to like uncover. excavating it and like slowly bringing it back mm -hmm. in. It's like one of those things that is pretty impressive. And then like in Xi'an, we had like the wild goose pagodas mm -hmm. and like those buildings are pretty impressive. And then- And also um, not too far from Beijing, like north from um, Beijing, there is the Hanging Monastery, hmm. where it's a monastery that was built on a cliff and it's really hanging on that cliff. Yeah, you went also there. Very old. Yeah. I haven't seen that one yet. But there's like a lot of different um, places that have been kind of restored. So there's many places that we've seen and things that are, you know, pretty impressive. So when we think about kind of the 
traditional Chinese or the traditional like Chinese culture and Chinese buildings and stuff, we oftentimes romanticize that mm -hmm. as foreigners and just as people in general. We often look back to the past and say, oh, must have been such an interesting time That's... period to be alive. Mm -hmm. But uh... I don't think it was like, it must have been real like tough like times to live in. I, especially comparing to how we live now and with all our modern technology that mm. we have, it's such a difference. Yeah, so yeah. it's always interesting when we look back in time and kind of, again, romanticize that. But luckily, today's mm -hmm. sponsor has done something pretty interesting. Yes, they have combined the old with the new. So, um, old traditions with new modern technology. Like we said, the sponsor of this video is Insean, and they have created a filter for Instagram which will kind of take you back to the Tang Dynasty. Um, so it is a filter and when you go to that filter and apply that filter, you will be yeah, dressed up like somebody who was living in the Tang Dynasty, like with their traditional clothing. Um, you can choose either the settings for um, male or female. So if you are a woman and you want to try it on, you choose the woman setting. So this is what it looks like on me. <laughs> and this is called Tongue Costume. So you can see it down at the bottom, it's called Tongue Costume. Yes. So this filter, as you can see, it's really funny, uh, really fun to play around with and you can look like you're in a traditional uh, tongue, tongue costume. costume. Yeah. And I mean, Tongue Hong Fu. Tongue Hong Fu, not a costume, but the actual filter is called Tongue Costume. If you have Instagram, try it, share it, and make sure to tag me because I would love to see it. Uh, how it looks on, uh, on you. Yeah, so tag Go Yvonne on Instagram so we can see how it looks on you. And I will tag uh, myself or I'll put myself in here because I also have a male one, which yes. is also pretty funny. So that is the sponsor. And thank you to Incheon for mm -hmm. sponsoring this video and letting us play around with this, yeah. funny, uh, this fun and funny app because we probably would have never found it if they no. hadn't reached out. And uh, there's actually quite a few other people involved in this, so check out the flyer and check out how, how other people are using it because it's a lot of fun. So then let's move to the modern China. Hmm. And what do you Let's like about, about modern, modern China. China? And so I think there's a lot of things to like about modern China. And we've been to many places from Baidu's headquarters to JD, yes. to the high speed trains mm -hmm. in like- You went to some companies back in the south in Guangdong. Yeah, I was just on a trip down south and I went to a couple of the high tech uh, places mm -hmm. and, and companies and, and even just like show like your phone is so modern like mm. everything we do here we use our phone i mean i know it's everywhere in a lot of other countries as well but here you pay for everything you get mm. rides for with your phone uh you buy electricity with your phone everything is via your phone which is like very modern yeah, and then like when we look at the modern architecture, like we see like some of these really impressive buildings that have been designed, like like airports, like the Dashing Airport yeah. is really pretty, or the Zoom Tower is very Zoom impressive. Zoom Tower, yeah, and then there's also like just average, and I say average, just average like um, train stations. Mm -hmm. Some of the ones that we've been into are just like um, like massive and impressive. Huge. Yeah, and very modern. Some of the tech companies that we visited are really developing uh, transportation like electric cars, driverless cars, which is so advanced. It's something so almost still bizarre to think about that you're going to be in a car with no driver in, in it and that's going to be just driving on its own and it's safe. I mean, if you think of ancient times versus today, mm -hmm. like if you brought somebody from the Tang Dynasty to today and you showed them that, they would think you were some kind of sorcerer or something, right? They always say the best the best technology mimics magic, right? You can't distinguish between technology and magic. So the farther we go along and China's mm -hmm. been doing really well at developing a lot of these technologies from, you know, yeah. again, trains, their trains are very modern and very easy to, to use to very technology fast. of like driverless cars yeah. and like, I mean, there's lots of things. Drones. Yeah, drones. Very like. Well DJI. <laughs> DJI drones. <laughs> and so there's lots of different things that we see. And so I think it comes back to how does the country and how does the culture blend both modern and historical. like historical yes. like uh, aspects of, of, of society or even and uh, history, in history and, and culture or even just like their cities. Like, mm -hmm. and do you think China's been doing a good job like blending? Blending those things like, like, getting the new going with 
still also preserving, preserving the old. The old. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think in general, I mean, I've been living in Beijing, so I can only really speak for Beijing because it's hard to tell, say something about other cities if you don't really see how it develops. But I think Beijing is doing a really good job on preserving the old. They are、uh, keeping up with. Like all the old buildings, making sure they don't fall apart.、Um, they are restoring some of the old hutongs, and even though I sometimes feel like it's, I think that's that's romanticizing, right? I feel like, oh, they were so pretty, but they were really pretty because they were falling apart, and now they're like redoing them, but still with the historical look of it.、Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we know what it looked like previously, so we might say, oh, we liked the old, like it looked more authentic. But anybody that comes today will see these modern like representation of the old like. But、mm-hmm. now it's just a, a building is actually structurally sound. Yes. And there's plumbing and there's heating and there's things that we need like in order to live、mm-hmm. in these types of places. So、mm-hmm. you know when they restore it, if they maintain kind of the historic look, I think that's part of the restoration process because. One thing they could do is they could just go into the hutongs and flatten it、mm-hmm. and build more apartment buildings. Like that's very like if the government decided that's what they wanted to do, they could do that. And so when we look at places like the Seven Nine Eight Art District, that has become a trendy place. They could have gone in and said these factories are useless. Yes, get rid of them. We want to build another mall, for example. But they didn't. They made it like they turned it into this hip place with like lots of galleries and little shops where people just come can come and. Enjoy their time off. And the same with the Shogun Park that was、mm-hmm. featured just recently in like the Olympics, the Winter Olympics. And I even went out there and like when you walk around, yeah, it's again it's like old, like iron factory or some kind of like industrial factory that wasn't being used for you know twenty thirty years. And now they've re like、mm-hmm. they've modernized it to have new facilities to actually make it useful. It has like a tourist attraction. And so that's pretty interesting, I think, in terms of like. Preserving kind of the ancient, and if you even go farther back, like we were talking about, like the Great Wall has been restored, and、yes. and, thing, and the Forbidden City has been restored. So there's lots of things that have been restored, and now they have a purpose again,、mm-hmm. which I think is really useful. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, what do you think? Do you like the modern, or do、And、you like、goals. the ancient more? Oh, it's a tough call because I do love and like all the perks of. Modern society <laughs> perks, right? And、yeah. like, and no, I, I I do like going modern buildings too. It can they can look nice, but I still think the old sometimes has more character、hmm. to it. Yeah, and gives has more of a feeling to it. Yeah.、Mm. Well, sometimes a lot of the modern stuff, and although the architecture is interesting, it's still just a mall. Yeah. And so you go in, and it's still the same shops,、mm-hmm. and there's nothing really. I、that、guess stands out. Yeah, there's nothing that necessarily、yeah. stands out. So I can I can agree with you on that. I think I'm kind of in the middle. I like how they've cut some stuff, but obviously they've made the cities more convenient with subways and trains and you know cars and streets and things that we can use on an everyday. So that blending I think is important. I kind of lean more towards modern. <laughs> I think <laughs> you kind of lean more towards traditional. Yes, and kind of historic.、So、but、uh, that's fine. I think maybe that's just the male versus female. <laughs> maybe I <laughs> maybe. don't know. What、let、do us, you guys yeah, think? Yeah, I was gonna say let us let let me know what you think.、Uh, if you're watching this,、uh, do you prefer the modern or are you more a fan of the historical side of things? I would love to hear from you. And、um, make sure to go to the Instagram and check out that filter and share it with.、Uh, mention me on when you share it on your story. Don't、yeah. forget to like the video. Yes, subscribe. And if you want to see me wear a hanfu, make sure to watch the video up here. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.